Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be doing a, another round of Best Friend Forever. Full disclosure, I am pretty much recording this almost immediately after I finished recording the first one. I did take a little break to hydrate my throat and, you know, take care of a little things just to get up and stretch. But... I might be a little ambitious, but I think I want to get a couple of decent videos for this game going. Um, and maybe if I can edit them all... And there's not going to be a ton of editing in these videos, I don't think, anyway. I'm not going to put in a ton of editing, no. Uh, but if I can get them all edited together pretty nicely, hopefully these are videos can go up while I'm on vacation. Um, that being said, my vacation is... So close. It is literally the end of this week. So I'm gonna have to actually like put my head down and get it done if that's what I want. But I I'm hoping that maybe I can schedule the videos. Um, and maybe that will be something that goes up since I won't be able to stream while I'm on vacation. I'll be out of town. Um, so we'll see. But let's go ahead and get started. We won't waste too much time talking. Let's go ahead and get started and keep on going. Alright, so it looks like we have a couple of things that we can do for this week. Um, personal times and also meetups. Uh, I definitely want to do a, a personal time, especially for this trust one. Because I feel like, you know, trust is very important. But first, let's go ahead and read our emails. L. Hi, good friend. Please contact me if you would like to change your life. Respond only if you are the owner of this mail address and $50,000. Please, I have a life change opportunity for you. It is worthwhile investment. Please reply to this email. Do not delete this or you will die in seven days. Well, luckily, uh, I can't delete it, but I can ignore it. Fox's Tavern and Bar. Sale by one, get one free groundhogs. Uh... I feel like it makes Fox a little hypocritical that she thinks dogs should be adopted and not bought, but then she also owns this exotic pet business. It, it just seems really weird. I feel like, in my personal opinion, no one should own exotic pets because they are, like, taken from their homes and they're bred, and then people don't even know how to take care of them properly, and... You know, I'm not gonna get on my soapbox, but it's it just- it's really weird for, like, this animal advocate to be running this exotic pet business, which I think a lot of exotic pets are even illegal. I, I can't imagine that a groundhog is a very good pet. A fox is- a fox is sketchy. She's a very sketchy person. Ever wanted a squirrel but bigger? Well boy howdy, do I have the deal for you. Today only, we have a special buy one get one deal on groundhogs. Groundhogs are the biggest cousins of squirrels, otherwise known as woodchucks. They are known for digging holes, burrows, up to six feet deep, so you can be a very useful companion if you are in the grave digging business. Your pet's groundhog will most likely sleep all through winter, so you're really making a huge savings on pet food. By now, before the deal is done. You see, no one... No one is ever properly gonna have six feet worth of shit for their groundhog to dig through. Unless they're giving their groundhog the backyard, in which case, you're, gro you're gonna lose that groundhog. Uh, Paul's Academy check-in reminder. Quincy here. Thanks for signing up to Paul's Academy. We hope you're having a great time caring for your new best friend forever. This is just a courtesy email from the team at Paw Prince Pet Care Center to remind you that Blocker is due for a check-in in three weeks' time. During this check-in, we'll assess how your dog training is going and where your little friend is sitting compared to all the other pups. See you then, Quincy and Jade. Is your life insured? It should be. Are you feeling down and out on your luck? The news really getting to you lately? Well, never fear, because with Obelisk Life Insurance, there's always a higher being looking out for you. What is Obelisk Life Insurance, I hear you ask? Why, it's everything you could need and more. Protect yourself from the threat of suddenly dying on the toilet. Ensure your family has something to remember you by when that inevitably happens anyway. And rest assured, your body won't just be added to a pile somewhere, but buried in a very large hole all by itself that raises questions about the sustainability of land and use as the sustainability of land use as burial sites. When the news is frightening and the belt is tightening, Obelisk keeps your smile widening. Something like that. Well, that wasn't so bad. 
Um, so who do we want to see? We should probably go see Sasha. Uh, Maribel would be interesting. I think she's my favorite so far. Robin is a nurse and she's really busy, which if this is like a dating sim, that is... Might be a little weird. Astrid, I'm not sure I like. And Anders slash Anders is very forward. Um, so I guess we'll have to see. I definitely want to do the trust possible time though. Let's go ahead and check in. Let's do both Sasha and Maribel for sure. Um, and then we'll do the possible time and then we'll make decisions based. I'm not worried about his fitness. I'm not really worried about his manners. That seems to be leveling up the fastest. So let's, let's definitely get these two. We'll do this and then we'll make decisions based on everything else. So let's do Sasha. Uh, he's, he's three starred, known for inflated rent and minimal installation. Oh, it's not him that's rated. It's the apartments. My bad. Oh. But I will note that the librarian guy, the library was rated because of him. Just saying. Hey, Melissa. Fancy seeing you here. I was just about to take Marshmallow out to the park for walkies and fetchies, but it's raining now. Marshmallow cranes his head up to eyeball Sasha excitedly. It's honestly a pretty mild response, but I guess he can't move too much in Sasha's arms. Marshy loves apartment living, but when the zoomies strike, it's time to get outside. I'm not really sure what to do if we can't go to the park. Any ideas? Oh, hang on, let me just pet him. I'm getting a combo. It stopped at 20. Okay. Apartment Ninja Warrior? Ooh, both of these are great ideas. Apartment Ninja Warrior. Why don't you turn your apartment into an obstacle course? Ooh, we can make cute little hurdles for Marshy to jump over. Marshmallow yips in approval. Sasha does too. Oh, good. Well, let's see Marable. Oh, she's at Foxes? Ugh. Known for extremely rude and powerful curses. Okay, I've got her wearing that hard hat and she seems to love it. I guess it helps that it's kind of a necessity. You know, I don't think a hard hat would effectively protect a Pomeranian on a construction site. Unless it was over her entire body. That would be so cute! A little hard hat running around with Pomeranian feet. I'm looking for something to dress Gravy up in for a formal event, though. though. Don't suppose you have any ideas. Bowtie, collar, collar, corsage, or princess tiara. I like the corsage. How formal is it? You Maybe you could put it together a corsage and attach it to her collar. That is genius. It would have to sit on the back of her neck, but that could work. You don't sell DIY corsages, corsage kits, do you, Fox? This is a pet shop, Marable. Of course I do. Brilliant. Marable seems to really like that idea, and Gravy will look so cute. Excellent. All right, let's go do, uh, trust. It looks like you want to spend some personal time with Blocker. Proceed and consume one motivational point? Yes. A celebrity came to Rainbow Bay. Iron Husk or something. But more importantly, Blocker photobombed the paparazzi by lying tummy up and bits out. I'm glad he's so comfortable around other people. <laughs> okay. Um. First date. We should definitely go on a date with Marable. Oof. Yep, let's do it. Industrial District. Maribel recognized me from Woofers, so maybe she's keen on a date. Hopefully I'm not reading into that too much. Hi Maribel, what are you doing tomorrow? Ooh, we're typing. Oh god. Oh god. Hello, just working. Always work, work, working. Oh, damn. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out together. Oh, man. Sh oh, like a date? So she put a heart emoji. Something like that. But maybe another time if you're busy. Maybe she's going to change her mind. We you guys can squeeze in a date after work, right? Just a little... Oh, no, my no, no, no. I would love to. Oh, my God. Let's make it work. I'll squeeze you in. See, I told you guys. She could definitely squeeze us in. I fucking told you. You know, cool story, Brew? Tiny little cafe. It's where we met. Let's get a coffee. Coffee? 1 p.m. My treat. Okay. Sounds great. So it's probably just her work. Her work lunch. Her work lunch. Excellent. 
Wow, that was painless. If only it was normally this easy to ask people out. Hell yeah. Pet combo. Pet combo. Pet combo. How far can I go? It, it, it's... Oh, 50! Oh god, okay. Hang on. This is very necessary. Just give me a couple of seconds. 75. Can I get to 100? 100? 100? 100? Hell yeah, okay. Cool story, Brew is as busy as ever. Typical of the lunchtime rush, the colorful patronage are cute around the block, and the chatter of the crowd is only broken by the coffee calls of a small barista with an impressive yell. Fearing how Blocker and I might age in the time it takes me to order, I hesitantly move towards the end of the queue. Melissa, over here! I turn in the direction of Marable's voice to spot her waving me down excitedly from a faraway table. I wait back at her before promptly gesturing towards the line ahead of me. Maribel grins widely and holds up two reusable coffee cups. There is a god, and her name is Maribel. Arriving at the table, I notice Gravedigger is comfortably on Maribel's back, peering over the peering over her shoulder. Aw, hi, Gravy! You made it! I sure did. I got you a coffee. Not sure what you like, so it's just a flat white. A what now? You know, a flat white. Super trendy. Objectively the best type of coffee. Oh, does it have caramel syrup in it? Nope, but I'll remember that for next time. For now, there's sugar on the table if you need it. And for Gravy, I got a big, big, big puppuccino because that's what she deserves. Yes, it is. Maribel's clearly talking about the bowl splattered, spattered with remnants of milk foam sitting in front of her. It's almost two times the size of the Pomeranian's face. As Maribel starts routinely doting over Gravy, I take the shifted attention as an opportunity to upend this sugar jar over my coffee. Sweet, sweet sugar. Light of my life, fire of my impending health issues. Anyway, I'm not here for gravy. I'm here for you. I mean, technically, I'm on the clock, so I'm not here for either of you. But that's why I schedule my site visits around lunchtime. Well, the boss doesn't know, right? Oh, you're working today? We could have waited until the weekend. No, shush. Don't be silly. I need an excuse to take a longer lunch. Besides, she literally already told us that she was going to be working today. The urban planner life is not as glamorous as you might think. Oh, that reminds me. I don't actually know what you do. You must be pretty flexible if a weekday lunch wasn't an issue. You could say that. I'm self-employed now, trying to make it as a photographer. So if you know any events in need of photos, let me know. Oh my god, you should photograph gravy. I'll pay you, of course. Oh, uh, sure. We can arrange that sometime. Great. Now then, it's question time. Marble's narrowed eyes and curled lips suggest a level of mischief I'm not entirely sure I should trust. Would you rather live in an apartment or a detached house? Uh, probably a house with a, with a yard, but considering we're in a city... It's a price issue, right? The Especially with a dog, a house with a yard. I live in an apartment now, but I would love to have a proper house with a yard. I think Blocker would like that too. Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from. That's the interesting thing about Rainbow Bay. We have so many dogs, but just like any city, it's getting harder and harder to buy a home with a section. Fortunately, we've managed to achieve the best rental laws in the country, so having a pet isn't much of a problem. But we need to be careful when we adopt to make sure we're giving our dogs the same chance at happiness as us. Apartments are a bad rap. But a lot of dogs are very adaptable to little living, and not just the small ones. Wow, you sure have a lot of opinions about apartments. Urban planner, remember? It's my job to have opinions. Okay, next question. Would you change your way of life if it would approve the lives of hundreds? Um... Of course. The sacrifice of one for the benefit of the many. Hard to argue against that. I appreciate your altruism. I think too many people are quick to choose their own simple comforts over the genuine well-being of others. Like, if your taxes increased by just 1%, it would be relatively little money out of your pocket, but that would all pull together to help fund public education or fight poverty. Yet there will always be people who see, who see taxes as theft. Rainbow Bay could use more people like you. What's with all these questions anyway? I'm testing you. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just interested in your perspective. I deal with these sorts of issues a lot, so it's all on my mind a lot. But if you really want me to test you, who's cuter out of blocker and gravy? I plead the fifth. Uh-uh, no way, nope. I refuse. There is no safe answer to this question. Oh, come on. Coward. It's fine. I think we both know who's the most special, wonderful, adorable little princess in the whole wide world. And that's you, Gravy. Yes, it is. Ahem. <laughs> Next question. Ready to move on from that one, huh? 
All right, let's see. Why did you really move to Rainbow Bay? What do you mean? Before I can finish my sentence, the familiar sound of a phone alarm cuts me off. Maribel excitedly reaches down to the backpack sitting by her feet and pulls out her phone. Ah, my lunch break is up. I have to head off to a build site nearby before I can go back to Town Hall. Oh, you should come with me. Oh, come it's just a quick inspection to check out how the development is going. It'll be super fast, and I can tell you all the develop all about the development too. Come on, what do you say? Are you allowed to bring strangers onto a development site? <laughs> Probably. I'm taking that as a yes. Let's go. Maribel shoots up out of her seat, bringing Gravy in her backpack with her. After securing the Pomeranian inside her bubble, she takes my hand and gently pulls me to pulls me to my feet. Oh, your hand's not sweaty this time. Huh? Did... Did I just say that out loud? Just for that, you're gonna have to hold my hand the whole way there. Curses. Oh, they're cute. It's only a short walk until we're at the development site on the outskirts of the industrial district. Temporary chain link fences enclose the grounds, so they don't look like they, they'd be very effective against any detriment... Any determined trespasser. It looks like construction's not far along, with materials dotted around the site and only the beginnings of a structure. Maribel held my hand the whole way over, and only let go to get hard hats for herself and Gravy. Gravy looks so cute in her little hard hat. Doesn't she just? She's the sweetest. There isn't a blocker-sized hard hat, sorry. That's okay, we'll just wait here. Won't be long, I promise. Right. Maribel straightens her back, drops her shoulders, and marches blank-faced onto the site. From afar, I could see her interacting with the site manager, behaving with a sort of rigidity and seriousness in stark contracts to the way she normally acts. It's honestly like a whole other person just stepped past that chain link fence. Speaking of the fence, only once Maribel walks away do I realize each piece of fencing is adorned with signs for an all too familiar company. A jingle runs through my mind. Scraping the sky and never asking why, that's the obelisk construction way of life. Hmm. Oh god, what's wrong? Ah, why are we screaming? No sneaking. Sneaking is bad. Always pay attention to your surroundings on a construction site. That's a fair point. So, uh, what's the deal with this development? It's a project of mine. The first of hopefully many. <laughs> it's an apartment building. The first high-rise outside of South Shore. Basically, the industrial district is the main residential area of Rainbow Bay, but almost all the housing is detached. There's a lot of demand for the area, but no affordable housing. So I'm fighting for high-rise apartment blocks. If you want this to grow as a city, the only way is up. So this is the start of your legacy as an urban planner? Oh no. My legacy is going to be a statue of gravy on Finrear Island. Actually, the development kind of skipped the queue, thanks to Obelis. Somehow they found out we were accepting projects and they have enough money to make their own schedules. Yeah, Obelis can be like that. Doesn't sound like you're a fan. Well, I mean, I used to work for them. Ooh, messy breakup? Let's not get into that right now. To be honest, they're not my favorite either. But they did agree to our controlled unit sale prices, so I guess they're not that bad. Maybe even giant multinational tech corporations led by faceless billionaires are capable of doing some good. Let's hope that's true. Anyway, I have to head back to Town Hall now. Wanna walk with me? Marble doesn't even wait for an answer and quickly grabs my hand. Judging from her power walk, I'd wager she's running late for something. Well, here we are. Oh, I never noticed the town hall was right here. It's pretty well hidden. Just an office building, yeah, really. Alright, I'll leave you here. It was lovely spending time with you. True to form, Maribel moves before I can really react. She ducks forward and plants a small kiss right on my right cheek, then quickly trots away. I watch Gravy staring out of her bubble at me as the warmth of Maribel's kiss lingers on my cheek. I can hardly keep up. Yeah, I like her too, Blocker. All right, let's see. Hmm. So we're still at smarts and sociability number one. Can I get something out of both? A puppercino. All right. Let's do advocate for adoption. We can do a sit and stay. We can... What's something we haven't done yet? We haven't done pup flicks and chill, and then... I'm not really worried about fitness. Let's do employ a dog? 
All right. Uh, Blocker went down on his went to town on his pepperoncino and quickly moved on to sniffing other dogs' buttholes. Block, Blocker nearly got adopted by another single. There is such there is a, such a thing as being too cute. Blocker's play dead was a little too convincing. Blocker got excited during a werewolf transformation and practiced his best howl. Blocker worked that reflector like an absolute champ and only chewed it a little bit. We're doing great. Alright, so he's really hungry. Alright, food. Hell yeah. Yum, 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 yum. He's still hungry. Let's go ahead with... Uh... Let's give him a chew. Uh, let's go ahead and brush. Hell yeah. Uh, he's still hungry. Oh, well. Never mind. Week four. Possible time. Fitness, manners. We'll work on his smarts. Marable, Felix, Astrid, Sasha. Let's go see Sasha. On my way out, I see Sasha walking towards me. An exhausted marshmallow wrapped up in his arms. Hey, Melissa. I was just heading home. We went for a big old walk and Marshy's pooped. And Marshy pooped. So many times. What a machine. Marshy's not exactly heavy, but gosh, am I ready to stop carrying him around. Do you think anyone would judge me if I put him in a pram? You could get a backpack like Marables. Why not get a pet carrier to tote him around in? Oh. <laughs> You're a genius. I was just kidding about the pram, but a pet backpack could work really well. I have to have a look for one next time in at Fox's Tavern and Bar. Thanks for the idea, Melissa. Sasha seems pleasantly surprised by my suggestion. It's always nice to brighten someone's day. Alright. We could definitely have a date with Sasha. Uh, I'm not really into it right this moment, though. Let's go see... Let's go do... Uh, let's go see Marable. The acoustic chanteuse, locally brewed craft beer and cocktails served alongside karaoke and live performances. Four stars. Melissa, come and have coffee with me and Gravy. Gravy's having a puppercino. Just ordered it, but I can shout you and block her a treat. What is the little puppo like? What's a puppercino? Well, it's only the most popular drink in Rainbow Bay. Not for humans, though. I mean, it's okay for humans. A puppuccino is basically just lactose-free milk foam. Because it's lactose-free, it's not likely to upset their tum, but it's mostly air anyway. Just a nice little treat for a well-deserved doggo. Well then, let's have one puppuccino, please, and a hot chocolate for me. Coming right up. Rainbow Bay never ceases to amaze with its dog friendliness. Uh, smarts. It looks like you want to spend time, yes. Turns out, if you go deep enough into Dogwood Gardens, they have all sorts of fences and obstacles. It took Blocker a little while to figure out how to get around them. How to get through them. But the mental exercise did him good. Alright, let's check the email. Wolfer dating tip 1. Spend time together. When you're looking for love, it can be hard to make things stick. Sending each other memes may be one way to flirt, but when it comes to courting cuties you met on Wolfer, there's no better way than spending quality time face to face. So go on. Get out there and engage in as many encounters with your would-be beau as possible. Who knows, if you say the right thing, you might even be on the fast track to Date City. The Woofer Team. NB, Date City is not a real place. Are your teeth in danger? We noticed you haven't been to see us here at the Smile High Club for some time. Dental hygiene is vitally important, particularly in, the, in these dangerous, unprecedented times. 63% of people over 25 report a big drop in bite strength and tooth solidity year to year. 30% of women say their biggest concern this decade is chewing or chew-related activities. One in two respondents to a recent survey reported having dreams about their teeth falling out and starting a revolution in a small island nation. Come and see us immediately! 
You owe it to your mouth. Sign up to our new Red Alert plan and get 10% off your first drilling. Let's go see Robin. Paw Prints Reception. Paw Prints in Rainbow Bay's premier veterinary clinic, owned and operated by Dr. Jade Kim. <laughs> hey. Good day, Robin. Hi, Quincy. How's Missile doing? She's the right ripper, all right. Spent the day helping the other dogs navigate the agility course. That's my girl. Oh, God. Once a valedictorian, always a valedictorian. Isn't it kind of weird to award dogs a human status like valedictorian? I mean, they're all just doing their best. Sounds like you don't think Blocker would win valedictorian. Shaw, I'm sure Blocker's got it in him. What's his secret talent? I mean this in all seriousness, my dog is a poo wizard. I'm not sure I want you to explain that. I deal with enough poo at the hospital, so you could definitely spare me the story. Robin didn't seem to like that idea. Let's go see Anders. Anders! Oh, Melissa. Hemingway and I are just on the way back to the office. You should stop by sometime. I'll keep that in mind. Actually, while I have you, I was thinking of taking Hemingway to do something special for his birthday. I don't suppose you have any ideas. Steak dinner. Well, I know Blocker would be happy with some fancy treats. Why not go one step further and cook up a steak? Oh. That's it. A ribeye medium rare with a peppercorn, bernays, and broccoli. Wait, dogs can eat whatever bernays is? That's a good point. I'll do a little research, but needless to say, I'm excited to cook for my best boy. Anders is a lot more excited than I, than I expected. What a good boy. Alright, so, uh, smarts and fitness. I said I wasn't worried about his fitness before, but, you know. Uh, blocker tried to weep between your legs while running, but otherwise kept pace. Yeah. I'm not gonna keep reading all the ones we've read already. Uh... Blocker caught the frisbee, but refused to give it back. No take, only throw. Yep. No take, only throw. We're doing good so far. Trust is going up big time. Uh, trust and manners are our best ones, so I think that's actually doing pretty well. So, he is so sleepy. Let's get him some food. All right. Yum 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 yum. Delicioso. Uh. So what's something that can help with mood? He's kind of dirty. Let's do his ears. I got confused, but I'm good now. So we did his ears. He's pretty good. He. Here. Yeah, we're playing. We're playing block. I mean tug. We're playing tug, and now it's sleepy time. Yeah, sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Week five. All right, let's see. Uh, we're gonna check the email. We can't handle this, fellow candle. Oh, we can't candle this. My bad, fellow candle lover. We have a problem. There are too many candles. Following our deal with Big Wick Energy and the Candleberry Tales, Battle Wax has a huge stock overflow. We've got so many candles, we could throw a birthday party for God. There are candles coming out of our ears, which is appropriate considering all the wax in there. Did you know candles can actually be made from the rendered fat of any living creature? You could absolutely make human candles. Not that we ever do that. Please come and buy some candles. Candles. <laughs> News getting you down? Pretend you do not see. Here at Obelisk Media, we know you want to get the most important news updates so you and your family can stay informed. That's why we launched the Obelisk News Network, a 24-7 news and opinion broadcasting system. News stories are filtered through our algorithms to make sure you only learn about relevant events, and you can even cater the system to your interest. Don't like to hear about war? No problem! Just set Owen into peaceful mode. Not a big fan of politics? Slide relevance to zero and you'll never be bothered by the world's problems ever again. Just because your house is on fire doesn't mean you can't get a nice relaxing sleep in. Obelisk News Network, eyes on what we know you know that we know you know is important. 
What's your favorite way to stay up to date with what's going on outside? A warm hug in a cold world. Obelisk is your friend. Uh, Obelisk is weird. We'll give Maribel a day off. I don't want to seem like we're following her. Let's go see Sasha. Well, look who it is. Hi, Melissa. Didn't know you shop here. I don't think I do. Everyone shops here. <laughs> no, not everyone. Rude. I was just picking up a pet car carrier so I can carry Marshy around when he gets tired. I got kind of distracted by all these cute animals, though. I think in another life I'd be a chinchilla. What about you? I'd be a great horned owl. Ooh, a hedgehog. I'm a bit cute with a spiky protective shell, so I think I'd be a hedgehog. Uh -huh. You know those are pests, right? <laughs> I like it. Maybe you should start wearing red shoes all the time. I don't think either of them took that answer seriously. Let's go see Robin. Hey Robin, taking a break? Oh, hey Melissa. I am indeed. It's long overdue. Wanna grab a seat? We can catch up. Sure, sounds good. Great. Have you played the latest Crimson Deceased Vindication? Uh, no, sorry. The last video game I played was... Booking Mama. Cute. Lothario Car, Just Interpretive Dance. Uh, let's do Booking Mama. You play as the mother and manager of an up-and-coming pop star and have to book great gigs for them. Oh, huh. Not into that? It sounds fine. I like to use games as a bit of an escape, so I don't know that managing and mothering sounds all that relaxing. I guess it's a matter of perspective. I'm not entirely sure how playing a fast-paced action game is relaxing either, but she has a point. Uh, let's see. Manners, social, smarts. Yes. We needed a dog model for today's photo shoot, and Blocker was just the dog for the job. Thanks to all our practice, Blocker could sit, stay, and lie down for a good hour before getting bored. Good for him. Let's go on a date with Sasha. Photon finish. Local laser strike bowling escape room and video game arcade. Nice, okay. I wonder what Sasha's up to. I suppose I could just go upstairs and see if he's busy. Or I could take a far more appealing, non-confrontational -conf option, texting him. Hey, Sasha. Have you seen my updog? What's up, dog? Not much, you. Oh, God. <laughs> Poor guy. We're actually gearing up to go to laser tag. Wanna come? Sure, if you've got space. I mean, it's, is it just Tib and Marshmallow going to laser tag? TBH, we need you to round out the numbers. Meet us at Photon in 30? Pew, 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 pew! I guess I'd better get ready. Concrete stairs lead down from the South Shore Street to an external basement entrance. A cartoonishly painted sign hung above heavy steel doors spells out photon finish in golden stars. As I push open the doors, loud techno and oppressive strobe lights become wildly apparent. Oh boy, it's loud in here. I should try to find Sasha. I scan the room. Through the heavy strobes, it's hard to make out my surroundings particularly quickly. Photon Finish is a sprawling multimedia entertainment arcade. In the far corner, I can make out the boxy shapes of game machines and photo booths. To my right, a number of tin, po tin pin bowling lanes sit untouched. Off to the left, the unmistakable shape of a bar is only partially obscured by about five people. Most unfamiliar, but I recognize the stature and relaxed stance of Sasha as he turns toward me. He doesn't have marshmallow with him, guys. Hey, Melissa! Sasha marshals, marches across the floor, his hands in his pockets and a slight skip in his step. As I meet him in the middle, he throws his arms around me and squeezes. He's very He's warm. I'm so glad you made it. I'll introduce you to my flatmates in just a moment. But first, let's get Blocker out of here. They have a canine crush here without all the noise and lights. A canine crease? Crep? Crayfish? Sorry, I'll talk a little louder. It's a crush, like a daycare. It's nice and quiet. Oh, he's digging. Oops. Sasha takes my hand without hesitation and pulls me toward a single door to the side of the bar, adorned with the universal symbol for dogs. I pull Blocker along as he dips his head slightly, ears folded down. As Sasha leads us through a door, a familiar little friend pokes his head up, and Marshmallow zips to his feet and zooms into Sasha's arms. 
Walker immediately perks up. Happy to see a friendly face as he drops into a play stance and starts to run in circles around Sasha's legs. Looks like he's glad to see Marshy. I'm so happy they get along. Hey, thanks for coming, by the way. We really wanted to do this, and it would have been kind of sad with uneven teams. Plus, I'm really happy to get to spend more time with you. In the calm of the crush, I can see Sasha smile with brilliant clarity. His eyes all but close, crinkling joyously at the- Joyously at the corners, and he bares his teeth with pride. I realize I've made me been staring for too long. Sasha's face falls back into a gentle rest and he gestures towards the door. My flatmates are waiting. I should warn you. There are a fair few of us, but they're really keen to meet you. Why do I feel like I'm about to be on trial? Shaw, don't worry about it. Sasha grabs my hand once more and pulls me back into the den. I'll see you soon, blocker. Is this them, Sasha? Oh, they're cute. Everyone, this is Melissa. They moved into the apartment below us just recently. Okay, let me introduce you one by one. This is Z. They're an artist. Oh, you know, I draw, sometimes. And you write. Tell Melissa about your fic. Uh, where do I start? Do you know what Alpha Omega is? Hey, 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 let's not get Z started. I'm Meredith. This is my girlfriend, em Emily. Hey, maybe they wanted to hear about Z's dirty fan fiction. Doesn't matter. I don't need to hear about it again. Mary's lived with us for ages, but Emily just moved into her room last month. If you ever need some help figuring our cinnamon roll child out, you know where to find me. Yeah, if you're ever home. We're home plenty, Maddox. <sighs> yeah, sure. Are you planning on introducing me, Sash? Oh, yeah, of course. Melissa, this is Maddox. He's basically my best friend. Yeah, we're the original denizens of Apartment 304. It was just me and Sasha for a good two years. I even knew him before he transitioned. You must know all his secrets, then. Hmm, yeah, more than you, that's for sure. So, is he ticklish? No, 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 nope. Let's stop this line of conversation right now, thank you. I don't want to ask about someone transitioning. God, okay. What do you mean, transitioned? Oh, yeah, I'm a trans man. I thought you knew. I'm not stealth or anything. Oh, okay. Wait, is it okay that Maddox just outed you? Can't be outed if you're not in. For a lot of people, it wouldn't be okay, but I make no secret of being trans, and Maddox knows that. If he wasn't so open, it'd be a different story. I definitely talk before I think sometimes, but in this case, I knew Sasha wouldn't have an issue with it. Generally speaking, though, you wouldn't announce someone's transness to anyone without express permission. No way. All right, all right, that's everyone. Let's get lasering. Aw, oh, yes. No mercy. Dibs Emily on my team. I want the new kid. Me too. Let's see what you're made of, Melissa. Uh, uh, okay. I guess I'll see, you I'll see you on the battlefield, Melissa. Come to mama, Sasha. All right. Only 15 minutes remain. Our backs are to the wall, literally and also figuratively. I'm pressed against the black painted MDF of the arena stealth maze. Lights flash overhead each time someone takes a hit. It's a war out there. A few walls over I can hear my teammate Z. They scream as they charge forward. Phasers blasting wildly. Suppressing fire! That's my cue. With Z pulling the attention of Meredith and em Emily, I lunge around the corner and bolt forward. My eyes on the column of wires and blue lights that make up their base. It's right ahead of me, just within reach, but then I see her. The distraction didn't work. Meredith steps out from cover and points her phaser right at my chest. I have to think fast. There's a branch off to the left. I may It may be my only hope. I dramatically duck and roll into the left-hand passage, seeking refuge as Meredith unleashes a barrage of lasers in my direction. But this shelter cannot last. I realize the sound of Z's screams have grown, grown closer. An ally. Good. We'll regroup and take out Meredith together when she runs out of ammo. I move further up the passage towards the sound of Z's overra overacting. They're close. Good. I'll just turn this corner and... Z screaming stops, and so does the sound of lasers. Something's changed. I don't know what's happening. I push myself into a corner, cold sweat dripping down my forehead. Am I the only survivor? The silence is punishing. Kaboom! Emily leans down over the railing above me, blue phaser extended as my harness lights flicker off. Oh, for Bork's sake. Your tactics are weak. Weak! She cackles as she retreats, tor as she retreats towards her base. With my metaphorical tail between my legs, I skulk back towards the red base, home. The, 
Cool dad is always so boring. I just want to shoot stuff again. On the plus side, I don't have to worry about being shot while my harness is offline. I attempt to navigate the arena's maze, but I've definitely been down this corridor already. Or maybe it was just one that looked the same. There's military-style netting covering one of the walls, intended for climbing. Height would give me a better vantage point. I pull myself up the netting and my eyes widen in fear as they come to level with a pair of familiar combat boots. Found you! Oh wait, your harness is off. Sasha lowers his phaser and I pull myself over the ledge. He helps me to my feet. No shooting me this time. Sorry to spoil your fun. Don't be. I'm having lots of fun. I shift back towards the direction of the red base. We can't chat for long. Sasha steps closer towards me. Besides, there are other ways we could have fun while you're offline. Before I even realize what's happening, my back is up against a wall. Sasha stands before me, close enough for me to feel his breath on my neck. Thanks for joining me today. I let it happen. Our lips meet and a tingling runs up my spine, into my shoulders, urging me to put my arms around him. It's a gentle kiss, but a passionate one. He doesn't push, but our lips, but lets our lips part naturally. I kiss him back, maybe a little harder than he did, and I can feel my surroundings drift away. I close my eyes, and in that moment, it's just the two of us, lip-locked in limbo. I don't even hear my harness come back online. In fact, it's only the dreadfully familiar sound of a phaser firing and my harness winding back down almost immediately that snaps me out of my reverie. And thanks for letting your guard down. Sasha cackles and pulls away from me. He gives me one final wink before athletically jumping down the ledge I'd, I had climbed up and running towards red base. I got played. Yes, you did. The game wrapped up with one final hit to blue base, courtesy of Maddox. In fact, almost all of our points were thanks to him. How dare you be so good at this, Mads? Seriously, can we get, like, one shot in, please? You both need to learn to watch your six. I'm just happy you're leaving on a positive note. Well, that's right. I guess this is probably the last time for you. Yeah, but I'll come back. And you could always play online with me sometime. You know I don't have time for that. And none of the games you play have good lore. Why don't you just stay? They continue like this for a good few minutes. Maddox tells them how to stay in touch. They give more excuses and tell him he shouldn't go. Hey, Sasha. Oh, what's up? I just noticed you were pretty quiet. What's all this about? Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Maddox is leaving later this year. It's actually not for a while yet, but we're all very busy, so we agreed we'd start having goodbye ceremonies. This was Matt's last laser tag game with us. Next week, we're having his last Dr. Hoomst marathon with us. It's what it is. You don't seem very happy about it. I'm fine. Let's go get Marshy and Blocker. I nod and follow Sasha to the crash. Marshmallow is curled up on a sofa, either out of energy or simply content to embody a very small potato. Blocker, however. Someone's excited to see me. I think Blocker might have worn poor Marshmallow out. That's how we do things. We play to win. That's not how I remember the laser tag game going. Hey, guerrilla tactics don't count. On a more serious note, are you alright, Sasha? Yeah, more or less. Something's clearly upsetting you. Want to talk about it? Or I can just distract you from it. <laughs> distract me? I'm listening. But actually... Okay. This is kind of a long story. Let me see if I can keep it short. Maddox is my best friend. I know he can come across as a bit of a dick sometimes, but he's been with me through a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. My family don't really talk to me. Haven't for years. So my friends out there, they're a lot more than that. They're my family. And Maddox has been a part of that family since the very beginning. Our apartment used to just be me and Mads. Over time we got Zian and a few others who have been and gone. Now Meredith's been with us for over a year. We even dated for a good part of that time. And now he's leaving and like... I don't set down roots easily, but I finally did and now some of the ground beneath me is eroding. That's a bit dramatic, but it's a bit of a sensitive subject, you know? I get that. I know it's not the same, but I've had a pretty messy breakup before. <laughs> You're right, those aren't the same thing. But it's kind of similar. You end up not really knowing what's next. You have to adapt to a new way of living. Find new people to turn to. <laughs> I know Mads will still be around online, and he'll come back. I'm just used to the security of knowing he's around. Anyway, thanks for listening. We can move on now. So I did mention a distraction. You did, and as tempting as that is, we should probably get back to the others. We were planning to go back home and watch the latest Half-Life Half-Light movie, you know, with the vampires? Wanna join? Who am I to turn down an evening of trashy movies after a great game of laser tag?
We will make our way back to Sasha's apartment and settle in for a night of one note acting and even more monotonous color grading. I fall asleep on the couch partway through the movie and wake up the next morning with a blanket pulled over me and blocker curled up at my feet. Whoops, I didn't mean to stay the night. I'd better head out and get ready for the day. Thanks for a great day, Sasha. Alright, let's see. We need sociability and fitness the most. Alright, so this is week five, so we should be going into the vet. So we'll do the vet and then we'll call it, maybe? No, we might have a little bit more time to do another week. Let's see. Doggy daycare. Blocker made some new friends and coerced Quincy into giving everyone extra treats. Uh, jog with the dog. Puppy paddle. Uh, you quietly let Blocker bury some treats in the garden for later. You're sure no one will notice. And then big spoon, little spoon. Not bad. Alright, he's a little thirsty. Pour out some water. And then give him something to drink. And then we will blush, brush him. <clears throat> Cute. And then... There isn't much else we really need to do. He's kind of fine. We'll give him a treat for being a good boy. How about that? There we go. There you go, bud. Hell yeah. Alright, there we go. Not bad. Week six. A big event. How exciting. Before that, though, let's check our inbox. Hey, neighbor. Hi, I hope you're all settled into your apartment by now. Thanks for inviting me to the housewarming next week. I'm really excited. Should I bring Marshy? Actually, I'm just gonna bring him. If he's a problem, I can take him back upstairs, but I think he'll really love hanging out with Blocker. Anyway, I'm so excited to see your place. That was an oddly formal uh, email for someone we've been to laser tag with and then stayed at their house. <laughs> Robin Savage, RSVP. Hey, just letting you know I'll be there this weekend. Managed to get the weekend off for it, so consider yourself pretty special, okay? Astrid? I don't care about Astrid. Uh, I'm totally coming to your house wording this weekend. Can't wait. I'm gonna bring Marable, so don't be surprised if she doesn't RSVP. She's just, like, extremely busy. Oh. And then Paw Prince. I can't believe you emailed the clinic to invite us to your housewarming, but this means Jade can't be mad at me for answering personal emails at work. I'll drag her along, so see you then. Cool, so we got a good number of people that I care about and also not care about coming to the thing. It's mostly Astrid I don't care about. Um, but that's okay. Let's, let's do our big event. Known for nothing yet. Zero stars at my apartment, but maybe one of these guys will, uh, leave a uh, review. Five stars, hopefully, if they review my, my housewarming party. All right, it's been five weeks already. I should probably get serious about unpacking. She's having her party without having unpacked? I'm going to take that as a yes. I'm not sure how to interpret your fart there, buddy. But never mind. I've met so many people lately, and I think I'm ready to call them friends. Plus, there have been lots of new puppy pals for you, too. Okay, let's get unpacked and then have everyone around. Like my first proper adult dinner party. Except I can't cook. Oh, we should have invited Anders. Oh, maybe we did. He is blind, so he might not... Well, that's not how that works. I was gonna say maybe he can't respond because he can't see the screen, but also there's like voice to text and screen readers and shit, so never mind. After inviting all my new friends, Blocker and I spend most of the week unpacking. Well, by Blocker and I, I mostly mean I unpacked while Blocker got nervous about me moving furniture and boxes around. And by most of the week, I mean I would unpack one box and then spend the rest of the day napping and watching Vine compilations. Vine. All done, and just in time for people to start showing, hopefully. Speak of the devil. What did you call me? Oh, Fox, you're the first one here? It certainly looks like it. Is that a problem? No, no, of course not. Do you think the others are far off? Scared of being alone with me? No? Ugh. Maybe a little. <laughs> knock, knock. Quincy, you can't just say knock, knock and walk in. But the door was open, and besides, you followed me in here. Well, the door was open. The door. The door was open. 
Hi, Quincy, Dr. Kim. Seriously, Jade is fine. Yeah, she is. Huh, calling you Jade just seems like calling my mother by her first name. Oh no, I am not your mother. Aw, Mummy Jade. No. I hope this doesn't come back to haunt me next time at the clinic. Jane and Quincy move into the kitchen to continue chatting while Fox retreats to the far side of the living room. Hey, you got everything unpacked. Nice digs. Can't wait to see the bedroom. Ooh. Haha, <laughs> I can give you the grand tour. No need. I'm sure I can find my way around a one-bedroom apartment. I was gonna get you a gift, but a certain somebody fell asleep under a pile of clothes and I lost most of the day looking for him. Aren't you just the best little marshmallow in town? Yes, that's you. That's you, my special little guy. Sasha gets so distracted doting over Marshmallow, he doesn't quite notice Astrid and Maribel arriving behind him. <laughs> beep beep. Oh. Aha, uh -huh. got him. Well, you ever not will you ever not be jumpy, Sasha? It's only when I'm not expecting it. I'm fine during movies, really. But the whole point of jump scares is that you're not supposed to expect them. Boo. Oh. Ah. Stop, I could have dropped Marshmallow. Oh, it was more like boo. Um, thanks for inviting us over, Melissa. Yeah, I can't wait to check out your place. We were trying to decide what it would look like on the way over. Maribel thought you'd have one of those 70s styles conversation pits. Hope I- Hoped? I hoped you'd have one. The place is so cute, though. I love what you've done with the fairy lights. Oh, um. The whole place really speaks a lot of your personality. What do you mean? I, love it. I mean, it's impossible not to like. Oh. Stop like this. The coven is together at last. Oh, Fox, you're here? Maribel squeezed past Sasha to join Fox in the living room, leaving Astrid and Sasha with me by the door. I suppose I should go, jo go and join them. <laughs> or you could stay here by the door like a school kids. Um, hello? All right, Sasha, let's stop blocking the door and let, let our host greet their guests. I'm pretty sure it's Leika who's doing all the blocking. Move it. Astrid hurries Sasha further into the living room as Felix steps through the door. I, uh, got you a housewarming gift. Felix pushes forward a plain brown box. It's small and altogether unremarkable. You don't have to open it now. Uh, but I'm gonna. I open the box and inside is... a small building? It's the library. Wow, you shrunk the library? No, it's just a miniature. We sell them at the library, but no one ever buys them. I think it's meant to be a paperweight. Thanks. I'll be sure to use it to weigh some paper down. Cool. <laughs> anyway, um, do you have anything to drink? There's some fun juice in the kitchen. Fun juice? You know, punch, but with rum. Rum punch. Runch. Oh, I don't really drink. Not great for the physique, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. What's your poison, then? Kombucha? tight. There's some diet soda in the fridge. That'll do. Felix shuffles into the kitchen with Mulder trotting behind him quietly. With seven people and five dogs already here, the apartment is starting to feel quite full. Oh no, what are you doing here? Ah, fancy we would arrive at the same time. Mm-hmm. Well, clearly it's fate. How amusing. Hilarious. I can hear the way you're looking at me. Oh, be quiet. Um, you two know each other? It's a long story. Robin is an old acquaintance. Acquaintance? Uh, I'll just come inside instead of putting my foot any further down my throat. Anders slinks off to the kitchen without another word. Sorry about that. Um, should I ask? It's definitely a good idea to read the label before you open a can of worms. Thanks for inviting Miss Isle and I, and I around. I think she's pretty excited to play. I'll try not to yell at any more people. I'm sure you have your reasons. Well, that's everyone. Everyone chats amongst themselves for a while as I herd all the dogs up to play together. There's not a lot of room in the apartment, but the dogs are making the most of the space. By the time the dogs are all settled in, so too are many of my human guests. Everyone sorted themselves into groups, huddling around various points of the living room. I guess I should spend some time with my guests. That would be polite, normal thing to do. And I am a polite, normal person. Or I'm trying to be, at least. Uh, Maribel, Jade, and Felix. Astrid and Robin and Qu Quincy, Sasha, and Ambers. Uh, let's do Quincy, Sasha, and Anders. I find my way over to the sofa where Quincy and Sasha seem to be in the middle of a heated what? discussion. No way the Day of the Dead series is way better. You're just so wrong. I can't believe it. 
Okay, so what you're saying is that you prefer Death Disco 4 over Day of the Dead tomorrow? Well, yeah, the writing isn't as good, but it's clear the actors are enjoying it way more. There are so many reports about the Day of the Dead director sitting the actor's scary jack-in-the-boxes and waiting in dark alleys with, in dark hallways to scare them. They were in a horror movie, it's method. They were being paid to act scared, not be scared. They don't seem to notice me standing there, seated next to Sasha. Anders appears to be half listening. He's turned toward them, but I notice his head seems to keep drifting off in another direction. No opinion, Anders? Hmm. Oh, the movies? I'm afraid I'm not really a fan of mainstream cin cinema. You liked movies before they were cool? I just like other kinds of media. Have you ever been to an opera? Good one. I'm under the age of 50, so... So am I. Uh, right. Uh, I'll be right back. As I move around the room, flitting between groups, a thought worms its way into brain. Into my brain. Where's Fox? I scanned the room. She was here not long ago, but she wasn't engaging in any of the conversations throughout the room. Eventually, I land on her, somehow blending into the background. She's standing over by the shelves, quietly eyeing up my collection of novelty mugs. I make my way over. You're quite well-traveled. What? The mugs? Oh yeah, yeah, I've been all over the place. Fox narrows her eyes and stares at me. After an uncomfortably long pause, she turns on her heels, on her heels and addresses the room. <laughs> Let's play truth or dare. God, are we 16? Mm. Ooh, yes. I think I'm too old for this. No way. If I'm playing, then so are you, Casanova. Like Game on. <laughs> oh, really, Astrid? Don't you dare. Fine. I'll turn my torment to Felix instead. Wait, what? This is going to be good. Almost everyone agrees to play. The room falls silent as all eyes fall upon Jade. Absolutely not. I'll see you at Blocker's next, next check checkup. Jade sees herself out as the rest of the room murmurs and shuffles about, forming a rough circle. The game begins innocently enough. Challenges bounce across the room, everyone doing their best to outdo the last person. Of course, as soon as the turn comes around to Fox, she stares me dead in the eyes and her mouth stretches into, into an inhumanely toothy grin. <laughs> Truth or dare, Melissa? Alright, I dare you to answer a question truthfully. Alright. Wait, that's cheating. We never set any rules. She's not wrong. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. All right, fine. Why did you move to Rainbow Bay? What do you mean? I just needed a fresh start. More detail. Um, go on, Melissa. No one's going to judge. Well, I guess everything just fell into place. You all probably know by now that I worked in marketing at Obelisk in New York City. I was really good at my job, but that's not necessarily a good thing. When you're good at your job, everyone relies on you. There are just more expectations, and at a place like Obelisk, that means more work without more support. So eventually I gave up, and I quit my job and moved here. The end. But why Rainbow Bay? Fine, okay, there's more. My last partner and I had been together since high school. They can remain nameless. After I quit my job, the plan was to live with them until I got my freelance photography started up. But then... They got a job offer they couldn't turn down, I guess. We broke up, I saw them off at the airport, and then a summer rainstorm swept in. My bus back from the airport broke down, and I just found myself in a park, in the middle of a hot storm, storm crying on a beach. Bench. God. Also, my ex had bought me chocolates to cheer me up, but they were in my pocket, and it was really hot that day, so... Yeah, I'm sitting in the park, tears down my face, melted chocolate seeping through the pockets of my jeans, clothes and hair soaked through and no way to get home. And that's when I saw him. Who? The dog wizard. What? Well, he was probably just a regular stray or something. He came and sat next to me until the rain stopped. When I tried to take him home, he just started running. I tried to follow him, but he was too fast. When I gave up searching, I realized I was outside... I was outside a travel agency, and they had a huge poster for Rainbow Bay. They said it was the world's best town for dog lovers. So I decided then and there that I would make a change and move to Rainbow Bay. Well, that's not as bad as I had expected. What, did you think I was an ex-convict or something? No, ex-cons are people too. I'm not going to ask what you were expecting. Probably for the best. That's quite the story, though. It sounds like you had a rough time. I'm glad it led you here, though. Yeah, I hope you can make Rainbow Bay a, a better home than New York was. Hmm. And I hope Blocker is helping you settle in. 
Let me know if you need help finding photography gigs. I may be able to lend a hand too. I'm sorry, I'm still just laughing at the chocolate. I really- it really did look like I'd pooped the front of my pants. I'm so sorry, that's horrible. I can't stop laughing. You know, sometimes you pleasantly surprise me. Well then, if it was possible to win truth or dare, I'd say you'd just won it. But it's not possible, so let's move on. The game continues into the night, with Anders and Robin consistently dodging questions about one another, while Sasha, Marable, and Quincy prove themselves to be truly fearless. Sasha pushes one final marshmallow into his mouth. He checks- his cheeks stretched impossibly wide. <laughs> Scrumfy Wumpfy. <laughs> what? Scrumfy Wumpfy. I don't think that's clear enough. <laughs> What's a Scrumfy Wumpfy? That's impressive. <laughs> um, truth. Alright, where's the weirdest place you've done it? Felix? He's a virgin, oh god. Felix, we can see you. Maribel gets up and crouches next to Felix, placing a hand on his bicep. Mulder follows behind her, tilting his head in concern. Felix, I'm physically touching you now. Wow, your biceps are really hard. Felix, you just can't fade into the background. You're over six feet tall and built like a firehouse. Oh, uh, hi, Maribel. How's it going? That's less impressive. Okay, alright. I want to know why Robin broke up with you, Anders. Oh, um, I mean, that's probably a better question for Robin to answer. Ha! Huh, no way, it's your turn to explain what happened. Is there a third option in this game? Can I drink for my silence? That's just, um... <laughs> Truth or dare, Astrid? Dare, of course. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I have one. I'm going to start playing Pony and I want you to take off. Nope, truth. I choose truth. Spoil sport. Together, the night goes well and we laugh until the early hours. Seems like we're going to do just fine here. Thanks, Rainbow Bay. All right. Uh, Blocker sat on the sprinkler and used it as a massage machine. Excellent. He's so hungry. Sorry, blocker. Hell yeah. He's still hungry. Poor guy. There we go. We're gonna get him all full. And then we'll- we will, uh, brush his teeth. I guess I have to, yeah, actually do things. There we go. Hell yeah. We're doing good. It's time for your first Paul's Academy check-in. Jane and Quincy will check in on your Paul's Academy class on weeks 6, 10, and 14. Make sure you're ready to put your best Paul's forward. First, let's check that training progress. Progress since last check-in day. Add adoption. Manners have increased by two levels. Social has increased. Trust has increased by a lot. Smarts has increased by a lot. And fitness has increased by a lot. Cool. I'm happy with Blocker's manners for now. Keep up the good work. He's a little lacking in social, however. Maybe that's something you can focus a little more energy on before your next check-in. I see you're making fantastic progress with Blocker. Keep this up and Blocker could be on track to becoming valedictorian. It's still early days. Your relationship with Blocker is just beginning to blossom. I can't wait to see what you'll, what you'll have achieved together in a few weeks' time. Alright. Uh, next, let's look at your class achievements. Current class standings. Welcome to the class standings where you can compare your dog to everyone else's. Keeping up with the Joneses? More like keeping up with the Boneses. I'll admit, that joke needs work. Without further ado, let's meet some cuties. In this semester, we have Cornelius, Junebug, Dodger, Ghost, Boatmeal, and of course, Blocker. Ooh, I can feel the tension building already. Okay, let's see how you're all measuring up. All right, Cornelius. Gold, gold, silver, gold, bronze. Whoa, Cornelius is crushing it. Catch those gold medals, bling bling. 
June blood, June bug, silver, gold, bronze, silver, bronze. Nice work from my main dog, June bug. I knew you had it in you. Dodger, uh, bronze, silver, 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 silver. Nice work from my main dog, Dodger. I knew you had it in you. Ghost, silver, gold, bronze, silver, silver. A respectable silver from my, for my buddy Ghost. Stay on the good path. Boatmeal, bronze, gold, silver, silver, silver. A respectable silver for my buddy Boatmeal. And then blocker, gold, silver, gold, silver, silver. In my opinion, that means we're doing the best, but that's okay. We have no bronzes. A respectable silver for my bloody block blocker. Pretty impressive stuff. I think we've got a promising group of four-legged students this semester. Can't wait to see you all again next time. Silver F Dog. Almost there. Paw Prince Vet Center. Always the bridesmaid. For receiving one or more silver medals this check-in and putting one paw in front of the other. Minor Award. Pupper Better, Faster, Stronger. For leveling up at least two of your pup's traits since last check-in. Certificate of Achievement, Pitter Patter. For giving your dog good pats over a hundred times. Wow, uh, that's a lot. How's that wrist? Achievement, what a scoop. For picking up all possible poops, like the responsible owner you are. Your Paw Academy check-in is now over. Time to end the week. Hell yeah. We're doing great. Rise and shine, it's week seven. So we are gonna go ahead and call it here. Let's go ahead and save. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for keeping up with my little experiment here of YouTube videos. I really hope you guys are enjoying yourself. I think this game is fun, it's silly. Um, it's LGBT friendly, which we love here. And uh, it's just nice and chill and something easy while I try to figure out it, what I'm gonna be doing with my YouTube channel. Um, probably a mix of things, but I think this is just a good start, um, since I feel motivated today. So, once again, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!